Well, hello there. My name is H.W. I'm Michael Burke. <laughs> I put my hat backwards just because it was so rocking. It was rocking. Yeah, but we don't want You're not the only one that makes some darn good... <laughs> some, some damn, damn good, good rock good, profiles. Damn good rock. This is the... Uh, well, this is the Helios. Yeah. Is this out? Yeah, it was in one of my packs. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember which one. So, um, who does? Um, it's on your website. Somewhere. People can check. Hey, thanks so much for watching The Kemper Show. Uh, we're over here at British Audio, home of the Tone Junkie, Loaded Kemper, and, and the Michael Britt, yeah. Loaded Kemper. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you're in the business for Kemper... If they got if lots the, of other stuff, too. They got some other stuff. But if you're in the market for a Kemper, yeah. those are the best Kempers to buy, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, what are we talking about today? We're talking about um, guitars. And the Kemper. And the Kemper. So and normal, how they work together. So a normal show. Yeah. Um, no, but I think that the, the issue comes up, uh, you know, do you need, um, is there a right guitar? Is there a best guitar for the Kemper? No. And, and, no, no, no. But I get a lot of messages. You get a lot of messages. We, we swap stories and they're really funny usually. <laughs> you know, of people going, it doesn't sound right. Something's wrong. And... Um, you know, your guitar must be different than mine. I've got this guitar or something. You know, it's all an equation. So right. it all works together. Right. Your Strat is not the same as my Strat. If they're both Strats, they're different. We're going to pull out some other stuff in a minute. But uh, what kind of Strat is that, by the way? This is an exotic uh, Strat. I love the necks. They, I don't know if you can see the flame maple on that thing. It's beautiful, it's just, of course. Just, and it feels like butter. Oh. I, feel, I feel like butter. I know, I played this. Yeah. yeah. And um, I'm trying to buy a couple more of those, aren't I? I did put the Illich backplate on it so it's noise oh, free, nice. so I can play high gain stuff without. Yeah. There's no noise. So, wow. yeah, that's it's pretty brilliant for that. Well, this one is not silent. In fact, <clears throat> it's so authentic, it, it will buzz a lot. Yeah. And, uh, and that's how the Fender Custom Shop does it, you know? But even if we're using different guitars, if people than don't what want we use. Yeah, yeah. You can still make it sound good. You just have to tweak it a little bit. Oh, 100%. Uh, 110%. Yeah. But, uh, so let's go through this. So let's look at this. We've got okay. a Bogner Helios uh, type profile. Second channel. It's really gained up. You know it's, what I mean? It's pretty gaining. I mean, it's, yeah, it's pretty up there. Yeah. Yeah. For what I do, this is probably the highest gain I will yeah. ever use. This is like my big lead rock solo in yeah. the show. Yeah. I like it because it's got a lot of mids in it. I'm not a scoopy mid metal right. guy, right. so I just like a really thick mid. So when you're playing the thin strings up top, it's still big. Sure. And that's kind of what I go for. Sure. And I'm on the bridge pickup, so that should be the brightest you know, right. sound on here. Too. And that's a that's a pretty, like, like here, okay, here we go. Guitars are unique. Right. That's a three pickup Strat. Right. Shouldn't shouldn't sound fat on the bridge. You've got a pretty overwhelmed pickup there, right? I do. I have a Duncan Texas Hot Antiquity in okay. the bridge. It's a whole set. I forget what they call Texas Hot set, but they yeah. this they call the custom whatever. But uh, it's like 9K uh, yeah. readout on the resistance. So right. It's a lot of output. Right. It's almost all the way up to a telly, but it's just below a telly. Play that guitar okay. on the bridge, and then I'm going to have you switch to this guitar on the bridge. All right. <laughs> Turn that volume back up. <laughs> it sounds like the sound machine I use at home. Uh, so can, you know, yeah. <laughs> I gotta be careful if it's in the my same range as tinnitus. I don't hear it at all. Right, right, right. It's silent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, it is not silent. And Yours sounds warmer, mm -hmm, more vintagey. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, lower output too. Yeah, you know. But some uh, of that is good for gain. I mean, I, who was it? Uh, Ingve or something? Uh -huh. Lots of really low output yeah, pickups, yeah. but tons of gain. So and 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 the buzz is sort of loud enough that it's audible at times. Oh yeah, when you're playing, absolutely. You know? um, this one sounded more modern, not in a modern way. Right. You know, not in an ultra modern way, but it just sounded like a hot. A hot strat. Right. It's you know something that you'd hear. Uh, it's funny how sometimes we say modern. We really mean like a tone that would have been around in the eighties. Right. Thirty years ago. <laughs> Thirty old years. Ago. <laughs> but I mean, two strats, two high quality strats. Mm -hmm. You know, two really high quality strats. 
Um, great playing sound. This guitar is tremendous. What's up with this? Wow. No switch? No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> Can't take Goldie. How much are these guys? <clears throat> Around 25. Yeah. Yeah, so. And they're pre beat them up so you don't have to worry about the first day. Right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah, these are cool. Yeah. These are really cool. Okay. Okay. For science now, uh, let's uh, let's go to something clean and try these two guitars. Perfect. And see if we can hear the difference still. What do we want to put this on? Uh, uh, we've got a bunch of stuff in here. Oh, boy. It's yours, so I don't know what you want. So what do we have in here? Do you want me to snap? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that fast. Okay, try this. Actually, here is uh, okay. here's an 87 Mark. How's that sound? Try that. So here is, uh, yeah, start on the neck, go back to the bridge like you did. Okay, that guitar sounds like a telly on the bridge. Yeah. It, 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 I would be fooled. And that's by choice. I mean, I love that pickup. But the neck is fatter, way fatter. You can definitely hear the output. Yeah. Is more. Um, and I'm a lot closer to the string. And yeah, the, away. yeah, and this is by far, by the way, this is like not my warmest Strat. Yeah, I own uh, Strats that are warmer than this for sure, and this is sort of this Strat's that thing. That sounds like a Strat. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These are dual mags, uh, uh, Fender Custom Shop dual mag pickups. So fives and twos in there. I, yeah, yeah, might be. I thought it was three and five, but it could oh, be five be. and two. Um, and I don't know uh, how they're done, but uh, um, usually they put the fives on the bottom. And yeah. Then the, Twos on top to soften up the tack, but yeah, that sounds right. And um, you know, they just came in this guitar, and this guitar's got personality, so I'll never change it. There you go. But uh, two strats, not equal. They do not sound the same. Now they sounded some more similar on the gain, mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of stuff going on to the tone with right. the gain. The clean's a little bit more unforgiving, and right, you kind of hear the differences more. Okay, now now the true. Tests. I'm gonna put a guitar in your hands. That I think is going to sound remarkably close to that guitar, okay. but shouldn't. Already. This guitar should be fat, dark. It should be woofy. More woofy. Yeah. Best sounding Les Paul on the show today. <laughs> best sounding Les Paul in the world on the show today. This is a good one. It, 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 what is that? It is a Collector's Choice 15. Uh -huh. so that Greg Martin model. Right. How do you spell dollar signs? Well, uh, well it's, <laughs> those are It's words. not even expensive compared to the ones you have to buy now. I mean, right, like, right. even all the R9s and R8s are, you are going up, up there anymore. How old so. is this guy? Uh, I want to say 2013-ish. Okay. Maybe six or eight years old. It looks really great, and it's even got the sort of, uh, see if you can show this to the camera, it's even yeah. got the bleed, the dye, bleeds. the dye bleeds into the, uh, which is which is how the old ones are, and uh, all the really expensive Les Pauls always have that, yeah. which is... It's got the gap here. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the gap in the binding. Yeah, this is, they took a razor blade and etched all the little Yeah, same thing things. that was on the original. And all of Greg's, uh, Greg from Kentucky Headhunters, uh, Greg yeah. Martin, this was a copy of his guitar. Yeah. So all of his dings, you know, are all there. Wow. So, yeah, I love this guitar. I went through a lot of Les Pauls before I found this. And then, as soon as I did, this is the only Les Paul I own now. Yeah. Wowee, got... that is a cool guitar. Thanks. And it sounds like, it's, it sounds really good. I used to think Les Pauls were just for rock or... Um, yeah. This is almost twangy. It's so... Right. The output is... Right. Is so low. I, Gibson, for years, has just been making... Uh, all of their guitars are exaggerations of their famous guitars right right we're like i i just don't like i don't know 57 classics don't sound like 
great like PAFs. Yeah, but not, they don't sound they like don't the sound, old PAFs. They, they don't, don't sound like these. Yeah, they sure. just don't. It, it, it in no way represents the classic sound from a '57 right. Humba. I, I don't mean, know how much of it's potting, wax potting, or anything like that. Or yeah, the I know there's a lot of variation, but um, there are a lot of Les Pauls that seem to have the old Les Paul tone, and then there's times twenty models that say they're PAF that just don't. Right. And I don't know if there's real variations out there that do, or if it's just we're approaching something like a PAF, but we haven't really quite you know we've changed the spec or we've added output and if you blah, meter blah, blah. these they're like i want to say they're below seven yeah i mean they're really they sound it i know but they sound so good play it again <laughs> So even though it's a Les Paul, I can play this on any any country. That day. sounds like a telly, and it reminds me of the saying I've heard, which is the best Les Pauls sound like tellies, and the best tellies sound like Les Pauls. Absolutely. And it makes sense that you would have a, 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 a Les Paul that you would want. You want brightness and airiness out of the right. pickups, and with a with something like a like a broadcaster set of pickups, like Fender Custom Shop makes these broadcasters that I think are really great mm -hmm. sounding pickups, and they're they're beefy and big and bold. It makes sense that two guitars that are sort of in different spots would start reaching towards the other ones and finding common ground. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, and supposedly the original PAFs were meant to sound like the P90s that we love. Right, right. Uh, they just wanted them quiet. Right. So they took the same number of turns on a P90 and just split it in half, and that's how they made PAS when they first came out. Um, and that's what, to me, this sounds like. It sounds like a P90, sort of. Yeah, it's, play the neck again. I want to hear that. Yeah. It compresses in a neat way when you dig in. It really does. It may be this awesome profile that you have, though, that's making it sound like <laughs> This is an 87 Mark III on the Clean Channel. Yeah. Uh, these amps have a ton of cool uh, vibe. You know, they're they're trying to get Fendery cleans, right. and this sounds you know, sounds great to me. Yeah. Watch out, Jack. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> anyway, so we have different guitars. They yeah. still sound good. They sound, and you know what? It's like the output of those doesn't feel a ton more than this. No. There definitely is more compression there. Yeah. But all that to say, you know, a low output PAF, a, a really good one. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a, I have a PRS. People are gonna like, you know, send hate comments to me for this. But I have a great PRS that I think is is, is my favorite Les Paul. Mm -hmm. It's the best one I found. I haven't played that one yet. But uh, <laughs> so we'll see in a minute. We're probably gonna change yeah. that. But um, it has these great 5708 pickups that mm -hmm. I always. In my head, I'm like, the this is what I always wanted single cut guitars to sound like, because they have brightness and they're they, but it's still thick. Right. It sounds uh, I, actually it doesn't sound like this, which is this has a this has a real um, you could if you told me like if I didn't look at it and stuff and I, and you said this is a this is a burst, right. I would I would believe it because it has the sound that you've sort of heard and it, those qualities, but um, I, I like that those guitars because they reach and sort of begin to sound like my other guitars. There's a real yeah. similarity between the humbuckers and the P90s and the and the different things. And and that's kind of why I got hotter pickups. From right, the right. When I I think of I run everything through the filter of playing it live on the road because right, that's right. My, most of my gig is right. playing live on the road. So I want to be able to grab each one of these guitars, take them out on the road, and use them without reprogramming everything. So I like hotter strats and weaker humbuckers. Yeah. So they all fall in line with my p yeah. It's funny you say that. Uh, we'll get, we'll, we'll uh, I want to play these guitars. Uh, but before I do that, um, it's one of the reasons I don't play Goldie live a ton. And it's one of the reasons I have a, like a vintage old Star uh, Starfire, a Guild mm -hmm. Starfire. And I didn't play them live for the longest time because of that. I couldn't just right. grab my go-to performance. Then I realized, HW, you have a Kemper. All you need to do is just Save, save as and and call it your you know HW knows tone Strat, Goldie. Goldie HW yeah. goes tone knows tone Starfire right. and that's what I did and then it was tremendous and that's one of the great things about the Kemper. Yeah. But uh, let me try these guitars because I'm really interested yeah. in it.
That is a good sound for the Holy crap. Can I have this? <laughs> How come all your guitars make me want more guitars? Is this? You have this? waffle at home. I know, but oh man, maybe I need a set. This thing plays and great. And I've got a duplicate of this with two tone bursts with a maple fretboard. Wow. Yeah. That wow. Is. Bart doesn't do anything on this one. <laughs> you really got it down there. I do. You know I tighten I mean? them. You in, really got yeah. the bar down there. Because I want all my guitars to actually be tellies, but yeah. they're like different shapes, so yeah. I make them all sound like tellies. This is a cool sort <laughs> of. Uh... It, it really doesn't sound too thin, although it's it sounds like a telly actually. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm about to describe here. Yeah. Uh, in between positions, man. <laughs> Um, so you hate it, is what you're trying to say. I, I have to go. I left, <laughs> I left something in my car, and I need to bring this with me. I'll be right back. Okay. No. Um. Th <laughs> wow. This is a really great guitar. Yeah. This is Thanks. really special, Thank man. You. Even when I miss notes, it sounds good. <laughs> it's like, somehow, <laughs> somehow it's like. It sounds intentional. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> what a joy to play. Thanks. Wow. Yeah. When I walk on stage with this guitar, I feel like a rock star. And it, it makes me feel better than I am, which I'm 
I'm right. very proud of. Wowie. So the collector's choice, look for those. There's a Shanks one that's a little bit darker. I yeah. love that one too. What do you think I get one of these for these days? I hardly see these going. They only make a limited number of each one. <laughs> I'm gonna guess around seven. <laughs> You'd have to sell one of your tweeds. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, you know, it's, I, uh, wow. The most money you ever spent, you posted on Facebook, the most money you ever spent on a piece of gear was... Was that tweet? tweet yeah. I can't sell, uh, no matter book. how great it is, I couldn't sell something newer for something that is a piece of history like that. Yeah. Although, I don't know that uh, that all those amps can stay with me forever. Actually, I know they cannot stay with me forever <laughs> because I, I need to keep getting... Turn over. Profile keep, the world. Yeah, need to profile the world. That is the goal. Well, this guitar and this guitar are in the realm of uh, you can pick either one up. So it would be like if you had the real amp in the room, they're going to sound different, but they're yes, both usable. Yes, yes. Now the trick would be to get something that sounds so different. And what do you do to the profile then? I bet you have the guitar for that. I have, uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, I bet it's shiny. It is. This is uh, made of metal. <laughs> they used a lot of metal. They used the wrong thing. No one told them. Yeah, it's, it's wood on the back. The whole body's wood. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. It's wood. Is this? This, this is, is where my entire road case rolled off the stage. Oh, wow. That's that's yeah. yeah it's a little messed up there. Yeah. So this is mahogany. It's a thinner piece of mahogany than even that one. Yes. Yes. No maple cap. No. They maple. they went no maple. Aluminum. We'll cap. just get yeah <laughs> aluminum. Although, uh, the bridge looks really well, sort of machined. Yeah, machined down to the body. Yeah. And then it's got just pickups and... Um, and these are the stock pickups. These are super high output. These are like 14K. Yeah, this seems... Totally okay. different than this guitar. This is a different thing. It's yeah. not even trying to be that thing. No, no, no. Even though it looks... That's, they this look what I similar. call hammer. This is hammer. Hammer. So, you know, you have different yeah. tools in your toolbox. Yeah. I, I tried to make hammer a screwdriver, which would be what this is. Right, right. And I can't and it's make not. that sound like this at all. So it's, I just put it back to hammer. Yeah, it's not. Okay, here we go. This has the blanket yeah, over. Yeah, this has the blanket over, like yeah. you're saying. better with the game it's a different thing yeah yeah and uh, you can't be mad at this <laughs> for not being that you right. know what i mean yeah. but what kind of pickups are these they're stock zomitis whatever they put in them and i would well i don't know but if someone described this as a paf no. I, I would go no, no, no. There's, there's not an airy quality it sounds dark yes. and muddy like yeah. the picture yeah humbuckers to say how would you go about brightening it up to sound more like this but not so if someone's got this at home they buy the profile that sounds great with this guitar dark with this one look we don't have an air there's now. this guy named michael Britt. his profiles yeah. are really dark <laughs> that's in case you didn't know in case you didn't, uh, know. In case you didn't know that's that's how michael feels about that uh, <laughs> maybe i just have brighter guitars and they sound fine okay we're already at 6.4 here and that so, might have changed i think it was 5.8 the very beginning okay here's what i would do here's what i would do I would recognize that we're not really looking for brighter response from the amplifier per se because we just had this amplifier sounding one way there. Right. What we want to do is maybe on a clean profile, we want to edit the sound of this guitar. So I would use this trick where I would come in here and I would go to the EQ. Now you can you can use on a on a different Kemper unit this right. EQ will be different. But 
what I would do is uh, switch this to pre. Now, what does that do? In the post position, that, that, you, that refers to where is the position in relation to the amplifier block. The gain, roughly. The, the gain. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Because the gain's created in the amp, right? Yeah. So do we want it where it sits in the signal chain on those units up there? Uh, or in, in the to toaster unit? Or do we want to move it before? Right? And when we move it before, that's where I'm thinking, okay, I, I, it, it, you know, it, it's somewhere in that block, right? Right. When we move it before, that's where I feel like the EQ then becomes like a Boss GE7 that you ran at the end of your pedal board, you know, or it becomes even maybe the when you if you took a guitar and the first thing you do is run into an EQ, mm -hmm. you're almost at that point able to edit the sound of the pickups. You're re-EQing the guitar rather than EQing the amp. That's yeah. how I look at it. You know what so I mean? So if you put it pre, you're re-EQing before it hits the amp. So yes. Like, yeah. Okay. And I look at Theory. that. I look at that as like here's now an EQ for my guitar for my pickups. Not for the amp. The amp's doing its thing, but now the amp's gonna see a different thing. Right. It's gonna see a brighter guitar or a darker guitar, whatever I do. I used to play a P90 guitar, like a Sheraton with P90s that I put in. And I loved that guitar, but the thing was they were a little thick. So when I wanted a cleaner tone, I would set it up to have some overdrive, but when I wanted a cleaner tone, I would stomp on the EQ and I was cutting out the mids, so it gave it a more single coil quality. Right. So I had sort of a dirty tone, and when I wanted cleaner, I would hit the pedal. Right. Kind of the opposite of what we do. And we I could would, use an effects or an EQ block for that. We could we're totally. Do, we're trying to we do could totally, here. but since we're not using this right now, right. I would go right here. Now I'm gonna uh, up this. I don't know that it needs less mids, but uh, but so let's find out. So here here is the sound with it off. I probably shouldn't have touched this. Um, he was flat. To be yeah, it was flat. It was flat. And uh, okay, here we go. Here's the sound of it off. Even flat. Does the position matter? No. Okay. sound bad but it is a little warm yep. let's do it on the neck pickup in the pre, so I'm right. going to alternate it between pre and post. Yeah, go ahead. gotten it somewhere it's brighter it's not going to be this good. it's not air but it doesn't sound one. bad no and that's definitely way brighter than it was and these aren't compressing in the same way right that thing really is and those may be ceramic magnets so i know which just sounds different than that that, that would make sense actually because yeah well it no i don't know that but it, they're compressing in a different yeah, way yeah you know i would believe they're different magnets for sure yeah It's not dark. It's not a dark guitar anymore. No, no. I mean, added a little bit of the pick too. Yeah, th that helped a lot, and yeah. that was one I wouldn't have thought of. But adding that that pick, that the transient, right, right. It just really helps to. I mean, that sounds like a single coil guitar. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, shh, Sunday morning, here I come. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that totally fits there. Totally fits. Well, death metal Saturday night, Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah. does it all. This is a, that's a cool sound. That's a really cool. Yeah. yeah, that's a really. Just need some.
needs all your delay and reverb on. Yeah, you just yeah turn them all <laughs> up and there you go. You're there. That's a really good sound. I would believe that was like uh, some sort of a single coil into a Fender. Yeah. It's really uh what is this a Midas? Yeah. Into a into a Kemper into doing a, Kemper, a doing, doing a, a Mesa. Mesa doing a Mesa Boogie mm. Mark III. So what is the lesson? The lesson here, I think, is <sighs> buy a really expensive buy more Les guitars. Paul. Yeah, yeah, buy more guitars. Yeah, nothing sounds like a really great Les Paul. Um, I think there's a lot of overlap in different guitars, and you know that your Strat on the bridge sounds like a Tele. Right. And that thing, I could you could convince me that it's a Tele. It has a lot of brighter Tele esque qualities, but it has a certain then air about it that doesn't sound completely different than this guitar. But there's qualities there that. You, some guitars are mimicking, but they never quite get all the way there. Right. And it's it seems like to me it's those qualities. Like if if I pulled out a a, a profile and it sounded great with a with a fifty style Les Paul that's a little on the thicker side. I'm sorry, a fifty style Tele that's a little on the thicker side. I would say it sounds great with that Les Paul. Right. That doesn't mean it sounds great with all Les Pauls. Right. And it also depends if you're playing clean or gainy. On gain, this guitar actually sounds really good. I bet. All that low end kind of just adds this yeah. warm bottom. Yeah. And the it, the high end balance is different once right. you get a bright gainy sound. And so, sometimes this can get a tiny bit shrill on high gain. Right. Because it's so open and airy. Yeah. On clean stuff. Too shrill. You should get rid of it. I know. Yeah, just throw it. I'll, I'll dispose of it for you. <laughs> well, um... Is there a best guitar for the Kemper? No. And they you all... don't have to buy the same guitars we use. No, no, you don't. That's a that's a but thing. But you may have to tweak them slightly. Yeah, yeah. I would start with that definition control. We showed a good amount of stuff in the EQ here. The pre and post, I don't usually do that, but that helped a lot. Yeah, I don't do it a ton either, but it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's what comes to mind when I... When we've already brightened something. Right. Yeah. The other thing we can just try here is there's a little... There's a high and low shifts. Right. And just for science, I'm going to go. And I'm going to up that high shift a little bit. Now we're, we're taking a little high end information and we're pushing it even higher. something there and that's pretty subtle work. and you can make small movements in it yeah it can help a little bit yeah i like the low shift for if i've got a profile that if i'm bouncing between different profiles but this one just doesn't have any bottom compared to you the can, others yeah you can you roll that down. low yeah. shift down and it yeah. fills up that bottom and you got to be careful because you can really quickly make these things sound stupid <clears throat> well it sounds better than i thought actually <laughs> That's what I meant to yeah, do. Yeah, I yeah. meant to bring the love the other way. Well, that's a good AM radio sound. There you go. Kind of yeah. Yeah, old school blues. That's how the blues used to sound because that's how radios used to sound. Exactly. So, <laughs> okay, well, uh, there's no perfect guitar, but there is that Les Paul. So buy that one. And my Strat. And Yeah, the Strat's really good too. Yeah. But this is this strat's really baby. remarkable. But I'm not sure that I've been in a room with a Les Paul that quite, quite, quite did that. The air about it. Yeah, I, I and I'm a tw I'm a tinkerer. I change pickups. I, I do lots of stuff to guitars. What type of pickups are those? They're whatever came stock. I have not even touched it. I haven't even adjusted the height of the pickups or the screws. Nothing. I have touched this just to change strings. I have a white Kemper rack, and even I want that. Really? I mean, that's how we trade a Kemper rack, a white Kemper rack. I would. <laughs> I'm not going to say that on camera, but, but come on. Uh, probably. Yeah. No. Um, hope this is helpful. Uh, I'm going to, let's, uh, here, I'm going to let you play us out on that gorgeous Les Paul. Right. And if you can just let us hear the neck and the, and the, uh, and, and the oh gosh, the middle and the everything. Maybe I'll turn on some gain after that and we'll see how it goes. Um, I have been HW. And I'm Michael Britt. Thanks so much for watching uh, The Kemper Show. Hey, smash that like button, hit subscribe. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. And it's quite encouraging for us. It is. Leave a comment. Thank you so much, guys. Here is 
The world's best Les Paul, apparently. Have we, wait, wait, wait. Have we named it? Have you named it? No. I uh, sometimes I call it Dumas, because Dumas Walker was the good... Okay. Tucker Header and song, but dude, okay. it's not really a good name for a guitar. No, so. you know, you know, I, I named guitar Goldie's named now, and it's famous. You know, I heard a long Goldie. time ago somebody said never name a guitar after never name it a female's name, a girl's name, because they're more temperamental. Mm. And so I've always named them just <laughs> the colors. You know, so red's red. Right. You know. Well, Goldie is kind of a female name, but it's also the color. Yeah, so. but uh, but uh, it, it the high E does come off the nut sometimes. Oh, see. See. Sometimes it's like, ah, I'm not into that. And I didn't say it. I'm yeah. just repeating what I heard. And yeah. I thought, well. It's weird. It's about once a month it happens. Yeah. It's very strange. Really? Okay. Uh, it's kind of like in a cycle <laughs> with the moon. Uh, <laughs> Don't want to help. It's time to end the show. Yes. Exactly. Time to end the show. Here is the world's best Les Paul, which we will name at a later date. Uh. <laughs> Telecaster I ever heard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs>